welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thanks so much for joining me. Now in today's video, I wanted to tackle the topic of time being an illusion. And if time is an illusion, then what's the point of astrology? These are very good questions. And I'm sure you've wondered, I know I've given this topic a lot of thought and I've put some notes on my laptop so I might refer to those as I go along. But this concept of time being an illusion, this is so fascinating. I think this is well known in the spiritual community. If you've ever studied the stories that have come from near-death experiences, from people like Anita Morjani, people like, well, researchers into the field like Dr. Raymond Moody, and then we've got uh, Dr. Eben Alexander has a very amazing story to tell. Uh, who else? Ah, oh, Dr. Brian Weiss. There are so many people who you can study to really get a grip on this concept of time being an illusion. Anita Murajani is a highlight for me. I remember reading her book and in the end part of her book I remembered highlighting lots of bits and rereading those bits again and again and again where she really describes some of the core spiritual principles and teachings. It's a terrific book and do take a look at that. But she talks about the fact that when she was transitioning to the other side in her near-death experience she could experience that everything was happening now. She felt her past lives, her future lives, all concurrently running in the now. She could feel her family members, but then when she was being, you know, dragged into the drama of the family members, she was being simultaneously pulled back. Fascinating stuff. It's really, really worth studying. Uh, and Astrologically, I mean, where is this information housed? I would say this is definitely very highly Piscean, very highly 12th house kind of information here. And, you know, where does astrology fit with all of these? If time is an illusion, yeah, what is the point of an astrology? You know, or getting an astrology reading or why would you do that? It's a really, really good thing to talk about. I'll see if I can keep it under 10 minutes, but... Let's just go for it. I think today is a day of no rules and let's just have fun and do whatever and, and let's be philosophical about astrology. And I think that, you know, with any profession, if, you're, if your interest is to one day be really good at that profession, you will get philosophical about what it is that you do. You know, even in things like fashion um, or, you know, people who make television documentaries or doctors or in every field athletes you will find that the ones and even definitely with um, athletes they get philosophical you know Eckhart Tolle talks about um, the the diver who's on the platform who's just about to do their magnificent tumble dive or whatever into those deep pools and you know he talks about the athlete whose need to win drains him of power. You know, I think even coaching athletes, all of that can get quite philosophical. So in this realm of astrology, I think it's really important to spend a little bit of time on the philosophy of what it is that we do here. And I also think that coaching is a huge component of astrology. I think it's... Um, potentially an underrated part of an astrologer's life and work. I think it needs to be expanded. I think it's important to be a good coach while giving out astrological information because you want to do so in a very sensitive manner. You know, uh, you don't want to tell someone, oh, your seventh house is trashed, you know. Well, no, don't tell them that. <laughs> you got to be careful with this information. Anyway, back to the philosophy, back to time being an illusion. You see, I've already gone down a tangent. I do that. Uh, time is an illusion. You know, so the spiritual community has known this for ages. I think, you know, and, and, and 
many of you watching will know this, you would have had personal experiences of this or like me studied people who've had near-death experiences. I've had a couple myself. I've had two significant times in my life where I can distinctly remember touching a realm uh, where there was no time. One time I was there for quite a while. The other time I was there, I just brushed it. So I have had uh, some experience of that myself, which is lots of fun. Uh, and, and it happens spontaneously very often. And you yourself might have had such an experience where you just absolutely know that time is an illusion. You know it. But you know, even science is catching up to this now. It's, it's catching up to the knowing of this, the ancient knowing of this and the spiritual knowing of this. A lot of us watching, we know it, but guess what? Scientists know it too now. Recently, I watched a talk by a guy called, and I've put it down here in my notes, Professor Carlo Rovelli. It's a terrific talk. There are many talks of his on YouTube. Uh, I've watched a couple of them and I intend to watch more. I've also watched things by, say, um, Krishnamurthy chatting with David Bohm. I've watched a lot of that kind of thing. You, you can also go to Terence McKenna uh, if you want to get into some of this. And there's a really great chat that Terence McKenna has with Ram Dass, which I really love. And definitely you can learn a lot of this type of thing in a more spiritual way from Ram Dass. Um, but one of the notes I jotted down from Professor Carlo Rovelli's talk was that he says there is no one unique time all over the universe. And he demonstrates this by showing that if you had two absolutely perfect clocks and you raised one, now he raised it just a few meters above kind of and said that, well, this one would operate at a faster time than this one would. You know, if you, if you brought it down, the times would actually be different. And I recently went uh, to a spot that was 3,800 metres above sea level. Great place to go. Uh, and I could definitely imagine that that distance, you know, from where I am now, of course there'd be a difference in time. That was a really interesting thing to experience uh, as I did recently. But now science is defining it. Science is on board. They're saying, well, there is no one unique time all over the universe uh, you know and I've got a note here that says time gives us the impression that it moves forward because the universe is expanding and, and that's another theory that the scientists have that okay time is moving in a linear fashion it's moving in one direction and that's because the universe is expanding now if the universe was to collapse then time would move backwards I'm not so sure if I'm on board with that one it's a very interesting theory nonetheless though uh, so in this, in this study of time, which now even science agrees is an illusion, and that different places with different gravity has different qualities of time. So they've shown that like where there's more gravity, time moves slower. And when you go up, there's less gravity time moves faster. I'm not sure if it's gravity as such, that's just something I'm saying. But, you know, that, that's, that's where we're at scientifically. Now where does astrology come into this? And I've been thinking a lot about this and I've been thinking about how do we have our own gravity as individual human beings? And, you know, when you've got a lot of air in your chart, does that mean that time operates more quickly for you? Or perhaps, you know, and if you're on Earth in your chart, maybe time moves a bit slower. These are things that I'm exploring as I look at charts every day now, you know. So that's why I keep abreast with lots of different information from lots of different realms because it helps enrich the quality of the readings that I do. So I'm definitely looking at all these, all these things as I work. What I do know about astrology is that it captures one moment in time. And what is that one moment? That is, and one of my astrology teachers that I tune into online, he so beautifully put it, he explained that it's 
yes, it captures that one moment in time. What is that one moment? It's the moment when you are born and you take your first breath, right? When you take that first breath of, you know, earthly air, I guess you could call it, when you take that first breath, that is that moment where you become an individual, separate from your mother. That is the moment, the first moment of independence that you have. You nourish yourself with oxygen for the first time. And it, it is, it's a breaking away from the life support system that you've been on. You've been a part of mum, you know, for the first nine months. And you come into the world and you take your first breath and you become this individuated I. I am. I am here. And of course, babies cry at that time. So ideally, if you have an astrologer present at a birth, which some people do, they take astrologers with them. And I read a story of this one astrologer who could literally feel Saturnian energy come into the room and and that was a very Saturnian baby how amazing uh, I thought that was pretty incredible when I when I read that description but yeah I mean if you take an astrologer there and you or you have someone who's very precisely taking the time ideally that is the time that's recorded it's the first breath it's not particularly the cutting of the umbilical cord or, or other things it, it is that first breath that's the one that you want to you really want to capture and one thing that I believe about astrology capturing this one moment in time is that as you live through life that one moment in time so you hit the earth that one moment in time keeps echoing throughout your life until your last breath right so that's that is you and those echoes just keep emanating that's very much one of the analogies that I'm working with in my head at the moment uh, I've got a note here saying that yeah your life is a repetitive echo through time how incredible you know because it's always you you know even even when you're hiding, even when you're covering yourself up, and that'll be some kind of Rahu Ketu issue that's doing that, right? The suppression, that will be some kind of Rahu Ketu action going on there. But even when you're not being yourself, you're still you. And you're still echoing, you know? And if it's, let's say it's a sound, and there's just echoes of that same sound. This is one of the things that intrigues me and fascinates me the most about human beings is that inborn nature that we all have. And especially if you've had a sibling or two and you listen to stories by mum and she'll she'll tell you how different you were to the siblings. You know that well when when this one was born he just liked to sit there like a lump you know but th when this one was born oh my gosh frantic movement all the time you know or, or whatever it is or you know it, it, it's those little things that are just you and that were there in you at the very early stages that you could just tell a person's personality in those early months you know, in the first couple of years, and that that person is still doing that even in their last couple of years. Uh, this is definitely the stuff that fascinates me the most. It's one of the things I like to look at when I look at a chart. You know, I want to see, I want to see your essence. I want to really get to know who you are at your core. I find that stuff really interesting. Uh, so your life is this repetitive echo through time. You know, if, if you're a and I like to use the sound analogy and echoes because it's something we can't see. It has no color, it has no shape, it has no form. It's like music. 
You know, our souls, we're like music or, or a sound that echoes through time, through all of time, you know. And, um, yeah, this, this kind of works for me because when I look at a birth chart, that is just one moment in time. And I get to see how, how the echo of that will work through the planetary transits as the planets keep moving you know and and they aspect and touch different parts of you you know is the echo amplified is it drowned out does it sound better is it more clear you know what have we got going on here you know do you really get to shine through easily do we get to hear the song that is you easily or or is it distorted at times or is it delayed or you know all that kind of stuff it's really fascinating and I've got a note here that says because the planets move in a predictable way we can predict events in your life and that's exactly what I mean by you know your your stars are fixed and then I get to see the transits as they move around and how they interact with your one set of stars and don't forget as a Vedic astrologer I'm not looking at just one chart I'm looking at your birth chart I'm very often looking well okay I'll tell you the ones I really look at uh, a lot of them sometimes I have to look at many okay some people are real puzzles and I have to do a lot of work but for some people I can look at birth chart d9 and d10 and I can quite easily read what's going on Sometimes I will dip into, say, D45, D60 if it's really, really necessary. There's D4 if we're looking at property, D7 if we're looking at children. Um, what else is there that I'll look at? I mean, I have looked at the other ones. I, I've definitely studied them and, and looked at them. But these are largely the ones that I stick to. D60 I don't go to too often if I can um, if I can not go there I'd, I'd rather not I'd, you know if I don't have to I don't have to but I will if I have to as I say some people are real puzzles and I really need to dig deep and look at their misfortune chart I think that's a D30 and loads I will, I will look I will investigate depending on what's needed uh, but yeah in terms of this point of seeing, you know, the echo or understanding the sound that is you that echoes through time. One of the other things I believe that astrology gives us and that I'm able to see is that, and one of the things I'm thinking these days as I look at charts is that we really need to work the echo. And what do I mean by that? There's got to be some acceptance of the fact that some of your life is set not all but some and I'm going to cover that in another video where I'm going to talk about the principle of Yogananda saying that 75% of your life is determined and 25% is free will so that's going to be another video but that's kind of where this concept of working the echo fits in because I think part of astrology is also acceptance of the fact that your stars are largely what they are and that it's your job to kind of work the echo you know can you make the sound that is you come through loud and clear and that's what I believe coaching and healing is able to do for a person and that's why I'm very interested in both coaching and healing as I've studied that for many many years uh, these are priorities of mine definitely and yeah I kind of think we need to work the echo I think we kind of need to be realists about our own life because when I was studying healing and you know I definitely branched off into listening to loads of you know Abraham Hicks and Anthony Robbins and the secret and law of attraction and you, you name it all the authors and speakers and channelers down that branch I've definitely taken in a lot of all of that stuff and 
sometimes I do look at that and that, you know, I am a little bit, well, how realistic is that? Do you know what I mean? If I, for example, worked really, really, really hard and believed with all my might that I'm going to be the Queen of England in 10 years, is that really going to happen? And, you know, I don't think it is. And, and, and that's why astrology for me is so wonderful. You know, when I, when I came to, to the Vedic system especially, and, you know, now that's why I'm so at home doing this kind of work. And I love doing this and I want to do this. Uh, after many years of searching, many years of restless searching and seeking, trying to find my modality, trying to find my thing, and now I feel I've found it. And why have I found it? Because I think in astrology, people who are into astrology, we are realists. You know what I mean? There's a realism that's here. The chart doesn't just define all fluffy, wonderful, happy things. No, it defines light and dark equally, you know, and one is not given priority over the other. You know, and if you have karma to pay, you've got karma to pay. You know, and that's largely written there. So that's why I love this system because there's a, there's a, there's a realism to it and an honesty about it and a scientific nature about it too. I really love the scientific aspects of this, of this field. So, so yeah, I think life is largely about working the echo, you know, and we know that we're going to attract certain types of people into our lives. We know that our parents are a certain type of way, you know, the sun and the moon, they are positioned in certain ways and our parents are certain people, you know, they're hard to change. Uh, it's, it's we who have to change. And what is it that I think we can change? I think we can work that echo so that eventually it just sounds crystal clear and beautiful as we intended, you know, that the sound that is your soul comes across in a real and authentic and beautiful and clear way. You know, I think that's the promise for each and every one of us. And really, I think that's all that we're after, you know. I, I don't think we want too much more than that. So that was just a little window into this topic of time is an illusion. So what's the point of astrology? If you have thoughts on this topic that you would like to share, please feel free to write them below. Share what you think about this very topic and how you see astrology in this modern world and how it can help us. I'd love to know your thoughts on this topic. And if you'd like me to look at your chart, then please do take a look at the link that will be at the end of this video and is in the description. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do. <laughs> um, and other than that, I guess I will see you hopefully on the channel, hopefully in the next video, which will be coming out soon. So thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you next time.